Hey everyone, Steph and Superfloof here. In today's real world demonstration, we're gonna walk you through the step-by-step -step process of configuring Power Apps with SharePoint list permissions. This integration is essential for secure access control and collaboration within your apps. Depending on your situation, we can use either item level permissions within your SharePoint list, but we can also leverage Power Apps formulas and functions. The floof if he wakes up, and I will show you both methods step by step. Before we dive in, make sure that you subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update on our latest tutorials, tips, and tricks. All right, let's get started. Here we are on my desktop. I've gone to make.powerapps.com. Now, if you don't see this exact same screen, that's fine. Microsoft likes to make changes. I'm going to actually click this button and turn on the new Power Apps. A very different view. Microsoft knows that not everyone thinks of things the same way, so they've given us multiple options to do the same thing. I can come down here to my app, Teams Notification. I can click the ellipsis and I can click Share and it will allow me to share with whoever I like. I can hit cancel here. I can go to apps from the left menu, select the app and click here from the top. I can also click the ellipsis and go to details and see everything within the app, including my versions and click share from here. You see it's the same interface. My best practice that I like to do is share apps with everyone in the organization unless there's a use case to not do that. So I'm gonna start typing in everyone and within Active Directory, there is a group called everyone in your tenant name. In my case, the tenant name is Steph Rose. So I'm gonna select that group. I'm going to make sure that I uncheck the box down here. Please get in a good habit pattern of always unchecking this box, because the one time you don't, you will send an email to everyone within your organization and never hear the end of it. It does tell you that make sure your users have access to the data used in your app, including gateways, APIs, connectors, and tables. In this case, we're leveraging SharePoint as our database backend, so we'll get into the permissions for that in a minute. This is just a first step. I'm gonna click Share from here, and all permissions were saved successfully. Now I shared the Power App with everyone within the company, but I didn't share the database. Power Apps and the database, in this case SharePoint, are two distinct entities. So if we were to have an end user, in this case I've logged in as Baron, try to submit a new report, Let's see what happens. I'm gonna select a contact. In this use case, we are gathering new duplicate entries. So let's say that there is a duplicate record or a duplicate invoice. We need to enter some information. I have some conditional formatting going on here, letting users know that um, what they've entered isn't complete. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see a demo of this app. Test.com, the correct for this one is HTTPS report.com so we've noticed that a URL is incorrect please update now if Baron were to hit submit we get a network error he has rights to the app but he doesn't have rights to write to SharePoint let's look at how we set that part up here we are back in the app with my account I like to access the data source from the app directly that way you ensure that you don't accidentally make changes to the wrong data source from here I'm going to select data and select edit data for the data source tied to this power app now i'm guaranteed that this is the correct data source from here we want to go and cite permissions and look and see what rights people have right now everyone except external users that group that we used before only has read rights they're a visitor which is why baron couldn't add anything to this list he could just look at the data in it so what we want to do in this use case is break this list off from the parent site. We want it to have its own unique permissions. We don't want Baron necessarily making changes anywhere else in the site just to this list. So if we look at permissions for this list, you'll see there are three groups here. These three groups by default are created whenever a site is created. This site is called Maine Coon Tech. So we have Maine Coon Tech members that can edit, Maine Coon Tech owners that have full control, and Maine Coon Tech visitors who can only read. These three groups are the groups you want to use most of the time. However, again, in this use case, we want users to add items to this list, but we don't want them to be able to delete anything. So to do that, what we're going to use is a modified permission set. So we're going to manage the permission, manage the parents, and we're going to create a new permission level. So here from permission levels, 
we're going to click on contribute because that's what we want the users to do. We want them to do a restricted contribute. So copy the text from the description, scroll all the way down and you see we have a button for copy permission level. We're going to click that and from here give it a name. We're going to call it restricted contribute and then paste in the description. We want them to view add and that's it. So we want them to view and add list items. So we're going to remove the ability for them to delete items. Scroll all the way down and click create. Now we've created this new permission level within the parent site. Now we have to go back to the list and apply that permission level. So I'm going to close out of this list back to SharePoint. We're going to click here and edit data again. That ensures that we're in the right list. Click on the gear, go to list settings, permissions for this list. This part is the most dangerous part of what you're about to do. We're going to click stop inheriting permissions and we'll get a warning saying that we are about to create a unique permission list, permissions for this list. Changes made to the parent site will no longer affect this list. We're okay with that. Now everything looks like it's the same, right? The yellow bar is still there, but it says this list has unique permissions. The three groups are still here and we should be good to go, right? Not necessarily. These three groups apply to the parent and are still tied to the parent. However, they have also been added to this list that now is unique. So what we need to do before you do anything else here is grant permissions. From here, we're going to click on hide options and make sure that we uncheck send an email invitation. Again, if you forget this step, you'll accidentally send an email to everybody and you will not hear the end of it. We're going to click here and say and select restricted contribute. Now, who are we going to apply this group to? We're going to apply it to that same everyone except external users. Now, if you had a different use case, you only wanted this to be applied to certain users, you could leverage Active Directory groups. I'm not going to get into orphaned users or why you would not want to use individual users here. Comment below if you'd like me to. That's a whole different use case. And I'm going to hit share. Now we see in the message here, something has changed. The view doesn't change, hit F5. Now everyone except external users has the rights to restricted contribute. Now, if we were to come into one of these three groups, because it looks like they're unique to this list and start making changes, those changes would propagate to the entire site. Please keep that in mind when you start making things different on a list. If I were to remove owners group from here and I'm a part of that group, I would have just locked myself out of this list and I would have to go to a higher admin to get me back in. Very embarrassing. Don't do that. What we have here is sufficient for our use case today. So let's pause the video. We're going to go back to Baron's account and try and submit his report again. Here we are back in Baron's account. Let's fill out the form again. Report one. And we see that the duplicate worked. That's it for item level permissions. That covers permissions for end users. Now let's say we have a screen in this app that we only want admins to access. How do we manage admin access? We have three options. We could hard code those admins into the app, which means that anytime someone goes on vacation, we would have to come into the app and update the list. We could leverage an active directory group. But again, if this group that manages the app, is outside of Active Directory whenever someone goes on vacation or shifts roles, they would have to work with IT to update that list. Or we can set up a SharePoint list with those admins added to it and then train the end users on how to add or remove users from that list. That way they're set up to succeed long term. Let's say Baron goes on vacation to Tahiti and Rose is covering him. The admins themselves can add and remove users. Let's look at that as a use case. The first thing that we would need to do is set up a list, which I've already done. Let me pause the video and show you that list. 
Here we go, a very simple list. The title is the username, and then we have a people picker for the admin. Now I'm gonna copy the URL. I'm gonna go back to the app, to data, and I'm gonna add a data source. From here, I'm gonna enter SharePoint. Select the data connection I've already tied to it. Select my site, and select admins. Now that we've added this list, how do we determine who is or isn't an admin? Well, we're going to leverage the app on start functionality. In the app, we have some on start functionality already going on. Let's look at it. We're setting our form mode to new. Because the list that feeds into this app has 950 records, we're leveraging some delegation workarounds. And then we're also using deep linking within this app. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to cover, cover either the delegation workaround or the deep linking. But let's paste in our is app functionality. Again, I've commented my code to make it easier for my coworkers. And what we're doing is a lookup off of the admin table. We're looking to see if in the admins column, if the email matches the user who is currently logged in's email. And if it's true, then we're setting the is admin functionality. You'll notice that just because I pasted the code in here, it hasn't done anything with it yet. Is admin is still blank. That's the nice thing about leveraging is um, leveraging the on start functionality is now I can come over here to app. I can right click and run on start. Now if I come back to is admin and double click on it again, you'll see the value is true. Now how do we handle that? Right? We've determined if the user in the app is an admin or not. Let's add a menu icon to allow the user to go to the unique screen. For this use case, that's what we wanted, was an admin screen that only they could access. If we go to insert, I'm gonna start typing hamburger because I know it's a hamburger menu. I'm gonna click, add it to the app, move it over here. And then for the visible functionality, I'm gonna have it instead of being is in just being true, have it be is admin. So now this icon will only show up if the user that's looking at the app that's logged in here is an admin. You can see it's already recognizing who's logged in from my picture and a welcome message. Now, if we look at moving this, I, this image over and moving the hamburger icon up, there we have the beginnings of it. Somewhere along the lines, I picked up the phrase, trust but verify. Here we've logged back into Baron's account and look what we see. The hamburger menu isn't visible, but because I moved the picture and the welcome message over manually, they are hard coded into the app. I think it would look better if the picture and welcome message were off to the right where they would be if the hamburger menu wasn't there. So let's go back to the app. If we look at the hamburger menu, we have a 1286 and a 10. Let's grab the picture and change the X to be a dynamic value. So what we're gonna do is copy the 1196 and say if is admin, because that's the logic that we're using, we want the value to be 1196. If it's not, lever let's leverage the admin icon, icon admin menu dot X. And you'll see how when I started typing, it went green and highlighted the menu to show me that that's what I was referencing. We can close out the logic and you'll see it looks great here. We need to do the same thing with the welcome message. So I'm just gonna move these two over really quick and look at where this one falls. Slide it over to be on top of the icon menu and we see here that now the X is 1030. So if I undo what I did, because we broke the dynamic X that we put in there, Now for the X here, we can do the same thing. So if is admin, we want it to be 951, else we want it to be 1032. Close out the logic statement. We save, we publish. Go back to Baron's account. And I'll hit refresh. One of the new features that Microsoft has rolled out is this new notification bar. A new version of the app is coming. We'll let you know when it's available. If I hit refresh again, maybe another time, maybe another time. 
There we go. You're using an old version of this app. Refresh to use the latest. And here we have Baron's picture in the right. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. Let us know your thoughts, questions, and any topics you'd like us to cover in future videos. Sharing is caring, so don't forget to share this tutorial with your fellow Power Apps enthusiasts. Until next time, keep learning, keep exploring, and keep rocking Power Apps like a true pro. See you in the next video.